All right, at number five, the Arizona Cardinals. Hey! All right, what a hey, shout out to Blake Shelton. Why not? Arizona Cardinals, here's the thing. You got Kyler Murray, right? We know what that year two leap looks like for a lot of quarterbacks. You're more comfortable in the system. You don't have the rookie jitters. You understand the playbook even more. Oh, and not to mention, along with Larry Fitzgerald, you add DeAndre Hopkins, additional leadership and playmaking ability. You know there's a conversation of best wide receiver in the league. Well, DeAndre Hopkins is always in that conversation and nothing will change. I guarantee there will be a little bit of a run and gun offense. But with that said, you know who's going to ball out as well on this offense? Kenyon Drake. Yeah, when you have that many wide receivers, you're going to be able to do your thing as a running back. There's going to be a lot more holes opening up for you. And then on the defense side of the ball, Patrick Peterson still balling. And how about Isaiah Simmons? Yeah, we got a new Zeke the Freak in the NFL. Number four, the Colts. Yes, I'm saying the Colts. Phillip Rivers, he becomes that leader on the Colts offense, and he's going to be throwing to that guy. Can't wait to see a healthy T.Y. Hilton. He did miss a few games last year. Actually, it was six. We want to see him on the field now that he has more help, better running backs, a better quarterback, offensive line. And we got big Q, nasty Quentin Nelson at guard, who is one of the best players to watch in the league. But this could be the last run for Phillip Rivers, so you know he's going to give it his all. Paying him $25 million for one season, he's going to have to leave it all out in the field. The Colts will be really good. And shout out to DeForest Buckner, who was acquired by the 49ers in that trade. Okay, the Broncos, let's move this along. Number three, I talked about that second-year leap for quarterbacks. Look at that guy. What a beautiful smile on Drew Locke. They call him Buzz Lightyear. He had a buzz because it was a light year statistically for the Broncos, but it was just enough to get the team excited and get the fans excited. They added Melvin Gordon to that backfield. He's going to join Phillip Lindsay, but the wide receivers is what I want to talk about. They went out there and dressed it in the draft. They went boom, 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 and they addressed it. They got Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler. They are adding that to Cortland Sutton, who is a monster, and they have a host of tight ends that are big and physical. Okay, let's go to number two. The Las Vegas Raiders. Let's just start with Las Vegas. Yes, the Raiders are in Las Vegas. We can't talk about that enough. New place, new stadium. New stadium, who dis? That's what they should be saying to everybody. But what did they add? They added Henry Ruggs III. I'm talking about pure speed. They add that to Tyro Williams, Hunter Winfro. And of course, they got Darren Waller, who is an absolute beast. That offense should be one of the best in the business, and it's anchored by a young running back who in his rookie season led all rookie running backs with over 1,100 yards in Josh Jacobs. That defense, too, is phenomenal. They're young, they're nasty, and they're all on pretty much rookie deals. Can you imagine that? And what a prove-it year for Derek Carr it's going to be because Marcus Mariota is waiting in that backfield. Can't wait to see Ruggs with all that speed out there making plays like we're seeing in these highlights right now. At number one, come on now, it's the Bucks. It is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Or I say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The biggest signing... You know what, guys? I'm going to say it. It's sports history. Forget about baseball. Forget about the NBA. Forget about hockey. This is the biggest signing in sports. It shocked everybody. As much as we thought it could happen, the Patriots were being the Patriots. We've seen them do it before. They did to every other famous Patriot that we know. They just let guys go. We would have never thought that Tom Brady would leave and go to Tampa of all places. But does he have the best wide receiver core in the business? If you think about Mike Evans, what he brings to the table, you think about Chris Godwin, what he brings to the table, oh, and they brought Gronk out of retirement? No more beach party and cruises? This dude is gaining weight and getting busy? Oh, and the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 55 will be played in Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Doesn't it seem like a fairy tale? If you want to hop on a bandwagon, this might be the one. Wow. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, now let's check out this list from top to bottom, we are going to go with the Buccaneers at one, Raiders at two, Broncos at three, the Colts at four, and the Cardinals at five. How about that? That's my top five bandwagon teams. Guys, go ahead and fight my five if you have any questions. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm punching away. First of all, hosting the Super Bowl is <laughs> a bad thing. Bad things happen when yeah. you yeah. are playing in the town where this, I just, I'm, go, go look at the history of it. It's bad juju. Um, I, and one thing, though, I'm glad, Nate, that you didn't include 
because this was this was my team that everybody's sleeping on back in the spring. They don't sign Tom Brady, and everybody says you're really going to start Tyrod Taylor. H have you seen Tyrod Taylor over the course of his career? The Los Angeles Chargers are going to be just fine with Tyrod as their quarterback. He's been yeah. a 500 quarterback on teams that aren't as good as the team that he is about to lead Agreed. onto the field. Uh, I you know I this was I jumped on this bandwagon early in March. Then some other people piled on. I think some people have jumped back off. So I'm feeling good about sitting there with plenty of little elbow room in my little bandwagon there. Nate, is this some sort of reverse psychology for the Cleveland Browns that you're doing right now? The fact that they're not on your list, they've perennially been on your list for underrated underdog bandwagon every year. Three years of ultimate consummate Browns hype out of Nate Burleson. The Browns don't make his top five bandwagon teams for 2020. I believe in the Browns this year. Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Barry. I feel like that's a steady hand, competent leadership. We know the talent level is there. I am in on the Cleveland Browns, Kyle. Uh, Nate, just give me one second. I am uh, ordering my uh, Don Bosco prep jersey. It's maroon and white. It's the Iron Men. Right. So that would make you their Jarvis. Nate, I, I define bandwagon as predicting success for someone or something who hasn't had success in ages. How about a team that doesn't want a playoff game in, in 25 years? The Buffalo Bills? I, I guess Brady is out of the division, so they're just going to go 16-0 and now. Everybody loves the Bills. Josh Allen got a 99 arm strength rating. They're going to take over now. It's their division. There's a new era. I don't know. There's a lot of hype on Buffalo, and we've seen that before. It hasn't exactly ended up pretty. I I'll give you the Bills, but I, I mean, I'll give you Don Bosco first, but give me Buffalo second. <laughs>